In addition to depicting the relationship between entities, data modeling can be used to convey additional information and constraints about relationships between entities through a data model. This is through the use of modality and cardinality. Modality is also known as optionality and refers to the minimum number of instances that exist in an entity relationship. Cardinality indicates the range of instances in an entity relationship and can go from zero to many. Both modality and cardinality are linked to each other. This depicts the relationship between modality and cardinality. You can see that modality refers to the optionality and either has a value of zero or one. Cardinality, on the other hand, establishes the upper limit. This extends our previous depiction of relationships that are from one to many or many to many to specify both the minimum and maximum values of the instances of entities at both ends of the relationship. In the example of nation and stock, we see the optionality of stock, but the mandatoriness of nation. The lower end of cardinality is indicated by the zero, and the mandatory entity is indicated by the one or the bar. This data model is telling us a nation may have zero stocks indicated by the zero, and a nation can have many stocks indicated by the crow's foot. A stock has to belong to a nation indicated by the bar on the side of nation. In the case of sale, line item, and item, it is mandatory that every sale have a line item indicated by the bar. But it is only optional that every instance of item have an instance of line item indicated by the zero. However, every line item does have to have a corresponding item that is indicated by the bar. Think through the case of a department and an employee and see if, it can, if you can make sense of modality and cardinality over here. The modality and cardinality rules are used to impose constraints on the database and are also used to convey and represent these constraints in a data model. These could refer to referential integrity constraints or could also be part of the application logic. When one thinks of the different entities that one can represent in a data model, there are of several types. Independent, dependent, associative, aggregate, and subordinate entities are some of the different types of entities that can be captured in a data model. Independent entities, uh, as we have seen earlier, are often a starting point in the data model and are prominent in the client's mind. Other entities are often related to independent entities. Dependent entities, on the other hand, rely on another entity for its existence and identification. They can become independent if they're given an identifier or a primary key. In this case, region name is part of the composite primary key of city. If one gave city its own identifier, then city would become an independent entity as well. Okay. Associative entities are byproducts of many-to-many -many relationships and are typically between independent entities. These are typically used to store current or historical data and can be made independent if they're given an arbitrary identifier or their own primary keys. Aggregate entities are created from several different, different entities and are commonly used with addresses or names. Subordinate entities are entities uh, that have data that can vary amongst instances. In this example, animals can either be sheep or horses, with sheep having different attributes like fleece weight and horses having furlong speed. They're both instances of entities, but the data amongst these entities can vary. For instance, horses don't have a fleece weight and 
sheep don't have a furlong speed. Here are a few other tips on data modeling to keep in mind, especially on attribute and entity names. The last point to keep in mind is on the names of identifiers. While meaningful identifiers are often recognizable and easy to remember, the problem is that they can be exhausted very easily, and as such, non-meaningful identifiers are preferred. Non-meaningful identifiers serve as a single purpose, which is to uniquely identify an instance of an entity. In conclusion, data modeling is an iterative process and it takes time to fully develop one. Please work through any scenario you might find regarding a data model and try to represent it.